If you are in Texas and you want to invest in cash flow real estate, but you are on a moderate to small budget, I got you covered, baby. That's what I'm here for. Let's freaking dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. I'm James Weiss. Woo! And I'm excited. I'm always excited when I do this show, man. I'm excited. I love real estate. I love money. And I love making you money, right? And I love Texas, man. Love Texas, right? I deal with investors from all over the world. Uh, and I don't just say I love their market or where they're from every time, right? It's not like when I do a Portland, Oregon video. I'm like, I love Portland. I'm like, man, fuck Portland, man. It's like goddamn fucking Marxist over there, man. Bunch of freaking crazy hipsters running around with their Starbucks and their skinny jeans. Anyway, uh, I bag on the liberals quite often, folks, but... Hey, you're from Texas. You probably do too, am I right? Today we're working from a man, Matt. Matt's from Frisco, Texas, right? And Matt, situation you're in, even though Texas is dope, even though Texas is landlord friendly, uh, Texas is expensive, right? It's, it's very, very popular. You know, <laughs> speaking of the liberals, it's very popular for the people trying to escape communist California, which is another place that I do bag on, right? Uh, but the weather's dope in California. But anyway, enough of that. What I'm saying is when all those California folks are fleeing communist uh, California, right? When they're doing that and they're going to Texas, what's it doing? It's driving up the Texas real estate prices, right? That's cool. If you own a house and you're getting new equity and you want to sell your house in Texas, right? That's great. Texas is sweet, like I said, but that does create a problem. For every pro, there's a con. And the problem it can create for people like you, Matt, is it makes you starting your real estate business, starting your rental property portfolio, it makes it too expensive for you, man. You're having trouble. You, you got a pretty small budget, uh, so you really just can't afford to get the cash flow properties. That's cool, bro. Texas is still going to be dope. And you should still live there. But guess what? You don't have to invest there, man. It's 2021. No reason for you to invest just because you live there. Let's invest where you can afford it. And where you can afford it is going to be out there in the Midwest, man. Ohio, right? That's why you hooked up with me. And I got a triplex for you, brother. It's not going to require very much money, right? We're talking like 30 k out of your pocket, right? You came to me with a budget hoping to spend around 20 k uh, even in a market like this that's this cheap, that's pushing it a little bit. Like, I'm going to be doing other videos for you, brother. We're going to be, like, around there, right? But, like, 20, 30K, right? 20, 30K, that's where I should get you set up, right? So what I want to do now, brother, is take a quick commercial break, and then I'm going to get into all the details uh, on this property. And this is a triplex, right? Try getting a triplex in Texas for 20, 30K. Not going to happen. Uh, but real quick, before we jump into that number analysis, everyone else who's watching the show, if you like what you're about to see and you like what I'm doing with Matt and you want to work with me, right? You're in Texas and you're like, God. God damn, I'd love to buy a triplex for that kind of money, right? I work with you one-on-one, -on -one, get you your own custom videos like this, right? Shoot my team an email. Uh, you could also click the link in the show notes below to book a call, right? What you're going to see, this property was sent to Matt privately months ago, right? So it's no longer available, right? It's just on Holton Wise TV now for everyone to learn, right? So let's jump into it. Welcome back, folks. This, this is what you're paying for. Let me stretch. Let me get a little, uh, a little, little stretch in there, you know, because this, this is where we roll up our sleeves and we see how the sausage is made, right? Any jerk off on the internet 
can uh, say, hey, buy properties out here in the Cleveland market because they're cheaper, right? Anybody could do that. But just because it's cheap doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make money, right? It is my goal to try to mitigate your risks of money loss as much as possible. So I want to give you all the information I possibly can so you can make an appropriate informed investment decision, right? I understand uh, the Cleveland market is new to you. That's why I'm here, right? I have sold over $200 million worth of real estate, run the largest scattered site rental portfolio of its kind, right? We're the one-stop shop for investors, okay? One-stop shop. Starts here, due diligence process, identifying properties that I think will make sense, right? Then after the sale, my team, we handle the property management. We do insurance, right? We do insurance everywhere in Ohio, right? So if you are watching this show right now and you have a rental property anywhere in Ohio, I can almost guarantee you I could save you money on your premium, right? Uh, reach out to us. We'll give you a uh, no obligation quote because all we do is landlord policies, right? So, like, don't ask us for a quote on your boat or your car. We ain't in that game, right? Just rental properties. Now, insurance, check. Property management, check. Maintenance, check. Renovations, check. Landscaping, check. But back to where it all begins, right? Due diligence. Understanding what you're getting, okay? Unbiased assessments. This is not my house. I don't own this house. The seller hasn't hired me to sell this house to you. You have hired me to break it down, see if it will fit your investment goals. So that's what we're going to do. 518 Lake Ave, Elyria, 44035. Been on the market for 20 Three days. The price, $122,500. I like this property quite a bit, but I don't like the price. We only have two photos. That is unfortunate, but it is par for the course when you're investing in real estate, folks. Tenant-occupied uh, properties, notoriously difficult to get inside to get photos. But I will say I do believe the listing agent and the seller were a little lazy on this one because it's occupied by two tenants, but it is actually a triplex. There is a third teeny tiny unit above the garage. It's like 300 square feet, something like that, a little one one. Uh, it's vacant, so I don't know why they didn't give us pictures. So I don't know what's going on with that. We'll have to figure that out. Um, as we go further down the due diligence process, I'm assuming it's going to need a little bit of repair. Uh, probably nothing major. I'm sure you're doing just like a quick turn, right? But it's kind of irrelevant because it's almost priced in like free. You're really not paying for that unit, right? Now, 122.5 is what they're asking. I don't think we need to pay 122.5. I think the appropriate price here is going to be 115 k Now, if we're getting like just a standard duplex out here, like, dude, we're probably looking at like 100 k for this because uh, each, each of the units in the duplex has three beds, one bath, right? And those are going to generate huge rents, 850 a month, okay? And then it's almost like we're getting that third unit for free, right? Like 15 k is basically all I'm really adding on to that is what I think we need to pay for it, right? And that one, after we fresh it up, we'll get about 550 right? So market rents on this sucker, 2250 or 27 k for the year, right? But this is what... Uh, different rates, Holton Wise, Holton Wise TV, James Wise, whatever you want to call it, right? Whatever you want to call me in this service, what we do here. This is where it differentiates us from like other turnkey providers, right? I'm not going to just tell you, oh, you're going to make 27 k a year. That's bang and let's do the deal. No, there's costs associated, right? So if you break that down, right, this is the chart. Show you your fixed and variable expense performance estimates, folks, of the 27 k you're really only going to be making a profit of about 13820 right? And then if we get it at my desired price point, 115 k you put down 32 bank kicks in 86 right? That projects out to a 29.4% cash on cash return. Sounds sweet. We're not done, though, right? Let's get back to some other real-world things we need to discuss, right? That 29.4% return would be... If we can get the existing two tenants up to market rent, if we could get a third tenant in that garage unit, garage apartment unit without any renovation. I don't think that uh, either of those are impossible, but I don't think either of those scenarios are likely. Here's what we have, but this is actually pretty freaking sweet. Uh, the two tenants in the duplex are actually super long-term tenants. One tenant has been there for 22 years and the other for 10. Their rents are 595 and five and a quarter. Did I tell you this? I'd rather... 
have a tenant in the property for 22 years at 595, uh, then get market rent and change my tenants every couple of years. You will make more money with the 22 year tenant because where you really lose your booty in this business is turning units over all the time. So what we don't want to do is immediately go to 850 because we don't want to lose those super consistent tenants. Folks, 22 year tenants are not common. Do not anticipate buying a property like this in the Cleveland market in what I would call a blue collar area, like a C grade area, CB area. Do not anticipate buying something similar to this and getting a 22 and a 10 year tenant. That is an amazing run. You want to do whatever you can to keep those tenants. So what I like to do in situations like this is keep their rent the same for the first year and then slowly bump it up. Right. The goal should be to eventually get them at or around market rent without a turnover because dude they've been there 22 years bro like 22 years like if you think you're just gonna sweep up when they leave and the next tenant's gonna come and pay 850 you're out of your mind right you gotta do a full turn right walls carpet uh new fixtures the kitchen and the bath the whole shebang right you're looking at at least 10k right so you want to try to keep them in there right so it's going to take us a while to get up to those market rents. And then, of course, at the inspection, we'll have to figure out what's uh, the situation with that little garage unit. But again, it's almost a freebie, really. I'm only putting a $15,000 value on it because if we were getting a duplex here, 3131, we'd probably have to pay 100 for it anyway, right? So uh, if the garage unit was all jacked up, I mean, you could honestly just not do anything with it and just rock this as a duplex, right? It makes cash uh, with just the two tenants, right? So all in all, Super solid deal, right? I like where it's at. Uh, the next step, of course, is to put in an offer and then uh, go through the home inspection process, right? Some things you should know. We are not going to be anticipating brand new roof, furnace, or hot water tanks, right? I know people do the turnkey investing and they think they're going to get properties with those new stuff. Now, that's not how it works in the real world, right? Like maybe a turnkey provider that just buys foreclosures, renovates everything, and sells it to you, but they're selling it to you at a premium. If you're trying to buy stuff at or below market value, fair market value stuff, arm's length transaction properties, we're trying to beat this seller up, get a, a nice little discount. What is that, 7500 off of what they're asking for? In the real world, landlords don't do that kind of stuff, right? Think about it. A roof, it's like a $7,000 roof. They last about 30 years. Let's say this roof's 22 years old. Why in the hell would the landlord... Uh, pay seven grand to replace the roof when he's probably going to get eight years out of it, right? Uh, furnaces cost three Gs, last about 30 years. Hot water tanks cost about a G, last about 15 years, right? So you're going to get properties like this uh, with these mechanicals uh, in varying age cycles, usually towards the end of their life cycle is what's common, right? That's why on your chart, let's pull that chart back up. As you can see, the capital expenditures I have you saving 1350 a year, right? You're not actually spending that, but I told you your net operating income estimates only 13,820. Let's say you don't have to do furnaces, roof or hot water tanks for the next 5 years, right? You would have 1350 for 5 years, right? In your pocket, right? It's not like you're actually spending that, but I don't let you guys believe that that is pure cash flow because I know eventually the $7,000 bills coming, the $3,000 bills coming, the $1,000 bills coming, okay? Another thing why we're into the chart Repairs and maintenance, thirteen fifty, right? You know where you spend almost all of your repairs and maintenance money? Turnovers, right? This property happens to have a twenty-two year tenant and a ten year tenant, right? So fucking think about that, right? If you had thirteen fifty a year times twenty-two years, that's an extra thirty grand, twenty-nine thousand seven hundred dollars of repairs and maintenance you're likely not spending, right? That we're budgeting for, right? Think about that. That's why your 22-year tenants, even though they're paying a little under market rent, that's why you should focus on them versus like hitting your specific uh, metrics, right? Real estate, yes, it's a number of business, but it's also a people business, and you got to play the hand you're dealt, right, and uh, make moves based on that, right? But all told, I think this is a super awesome investment, and I'm super high on Elyria right now. Uh, it's west of Cleveland, and I think we get a lot better deals in Elyria because the national folks are, like, just hammering, Cleveland, 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 right? You see all these articles like, what's the best turnkey rental market? And they say Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. But people out of state, they don't ever realize that there's, like, all these other uh, – uh, cities and suburbs around Cleveland. Greater Cleveland area has like two or three million people in it. Only like 350 or 60,000 of them live in the city of Cleveland, right? So there's a lot of fucking housing outside of the Cleveland city walls that a lot of people aren't paying attention to. And I also believe the government in Elyria is easier to deal with, more landlord friendly than the government in Cleveland, right? Like in whole, at whole wise, we deal with like, I don't know, 30 different municipalities, right? 
Illyria is one of the most landlord friendly of them in the entire Cleveland market. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.